So we're back out here for a little bit of table talk and the subject is Glock modifications. Now, we would all agree the guns we shoot the most now in classes are Glocks. Absolutely. Absolutely. And that's a direct byproduct of how popular they are worldwide. Now, Ken, if you wouldn't mind, kick off the guns you got in the mods and we'll just take it from there. Okay, the gun I probably carry the most in the Glock line, I almost have it with me all the time, is a Glock 19. It's a compact, readily concealable gun, still holds 15 rounds. And on this one, I happen to have the Warren Tactical Sights, tritium front sight insert. I'm not much for tritium in the rear. Yeah. One of the things from a grip standpoint, it's got a textured surface, and, the, and you and I are both good buddies with Dave Bowie. He does an excellent job of texturing the grip so that it doesn't slip or slide. This one particular gun I carry a lot has a Crimson Trace laser unit on it. For me, I have a fairly big hand. When I shoot a Glock, the slide comes back and cuts grooves in my hands. I've actually got scars on each side of the web of my hand from shooting a Glock. A buddy of ours, Frank Royce, sharp guy, he came up with a product called the Grip Force Adapter. And basically it's a unit that mounts on the rear of the frame that gives you an extended, if you will, like a beaver tail protection, totally fix the problem. This thing is a godsend. Dave, I know you're a fan of it. If right, you wouldn't absolutely. mind, take us through your Glock. Okay, on uh, my G17, it's a Gen 4. I have a uh, the Ameriglow Hackathon sights. I have a uh, Guardian trigger made by Jeff Wilson at GlockTriggers.com. Just short of a competition grade trigger, what it gives you is a little bit of a wall before it breaks. Very nice to, once you get into the trigger, if circumstances change and you have to get back out of the trigger, very easy to accomplish. Uh, of course, I have the Vickers mag button. The new one for the Gen 4. For the Gen 4. And I'm also running a Rogers grip adapter. It's basically a mag well. That's the dual function of it. But what it, its actual purpose is to allow a higher purchase on the Glock. That rolls into one of the things I like. And this is one of my guns. Now, this happens to be a first-gen Glock. It did not have the finger grooves. But one of the things I have Bowie do on when he customizes my guns is take the finger grooves off yeah because I'm not a fan of the finger grooves and like you said the, the finger grooves are great as long as they fit your fingers yeah. when they don't it's a problem probably the, one of the single biggest complaints I hear from Glock users is they don't they would like to see the finger grooves go away they don't really seem to they try to make them fit the average hand problem there's no average hand here. absolutely and you see the texturing like Bowie does and then one of the things Glock did to address the fact that the guns can get a little bit slick like in the Gen 3 format with right. sweaty hands as they did this texturing on the Gen 4. Yeah, and the texturing is definitely an improvement from a grip standard. When your hands are sweaty or wet or muddy or most importantly, bloody. Blood's like having grease or oil on your hands. The guns can be hard to hold on to. So an adhesive grip surface is an advantage in a fighting gun. All right, one thing we all agree in, you want to keep factory springs and the striker spring and the recoil spring. Right. On top of that, you gotta clean and lubricate the guns. These guns have kinda got a little myth built around them. You never have to clean them or lubricate them, and that is simply untrue. Now, they're very tolerant to running dirty and, and somewhat dry, but you don't wanna run them that way. Ken, you got a pretty good line on that. Yeah, thing, I just tell people, you know, you don't have to take a bath very often either. You can go for months without taking a bath. You don't wanna be around people like that. And my theory is if you got somebody that's, that's backing you up, a brother, officer, teammate, family member, whoever, do you want the person who has your life at stake carrying a gun that's not clean or lubricated? Yeah, it's, it's just no it's stupid. Oh. Now, Dave, as we wrap this up, you're going to have a Glock. What are the, some of the absolute things you've got to sort out or the, what, the modifications you want to do when you use the gun? Okay, the primary modification, first thing, is get rid of the factory plastic sights and get a quality set of sights on the gun. If that was the the one thing that I would do, that would be it. I agree 100%. You know, one last thing, Larry, and I think we all agree, they make Glocks in a lot of calibers. But in my opinion, if you own a Glock pistol and you want the best, you want a nine millimeter. I agree. The, the gun was built to be a nine millimeter. They work the best, they last the longest. As a general rule, the Glock 17 is the gun that's kind of the baseline. And if you can live with a gun that size, that's probably your best choice. If you can't, if you need something a little smaller, look at the Glock 19. Between those two guns, generally you will get the job done. They're both great guns, they have excellent track records. 
We hope you got something out of this. This is something we kind of put together real quick, drug out some of our own personal blocks, and we wanted to pass on to you lessons learned that we all have from running these guns. Hey, thanks for watching the Vickers Tactical YouTube channel. To subscribe, click here. And to watch some of my favorite videos, click here. Have a good one. LAV out.